So my uh, topic is on the reversal of skin aging by elimination of senescent cells. Uh, uh, in the hallmarks of aging that has been published a couple of years ago, uh, one of the hallmarks of, of aging is cellular senescence. So organismic aging is uh, due in part to cellular senescence. Um, uh, I show you here that cellular senescence can be induced in human cells by repeated passaging, which leads to progressive telomere shortening and subsequent cell cycle arrest. Uh, alternatively, premature senescence uh, can also be induced by stressing the cells, for example, by UV irradiation, but many other procedures. And what is clear now that uh, senescent cells accumulate with age in many tissues, and there is convincing evidence from mouse models that genetic elimination of uh, senescent cells delays aging. I can't go into much detail here. Um, as already alluded to by Peter, there is a new trend in the field to eliminate, try to eliminate senescent cells by applying small molecules, not genetically, which would not be possible in humans. And these compounds are called senolytica, which may allow clinical translation in the end. And in the next slide, you will have a deja vu. I have chosen this very impressive uh, senolytic model, uh, molecule developed by Peter and his lab. And here you see the functional and phenotypical rejuvenation, which we just have seen by a senolytic peptide. But now there are many groups working on senolytics, and uh, senolytics are being tested in mouse models for a plethora of age-associated diseases, including Alzheimer's disease, osteoarthritis, kidney disease, and so on. I just have a few um, 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 papers here. Uh, and the question that is interesting for us, what is going on with senescence in human skin aging? Uh, in this respect, we published about 20 years ago a study where we show that in healthy human people, uh, we see uh, the accumulation of senescent cells as the people are aging. So uh, here we have a young donor um, and we see uh, senescent cells. So they are P16 positive cells are here senescent cells are showing up in the epidermis and in the dermis and in the old donors. You have an increased number of these senescent cells, and here's the uh, here's the uh, quantification. So we see that in the very old people, like up to 95 years, there you can have up to 10% senescent cells in your skin. But in the in the lower age groups, it's usually between one and five percent. So that's a minor um, a minor uh, percentage of senescent cells, and we think these cells are driving the aging process. Um, skin aging is also enhanced by sunlight. You can see this on this picture of a truck driver who experienced uh, 25 years of sun exposure on the left side of his face due to his open window during driving. So um, skin aging is enhanced by sunlight. And so this led us to the hypothesis that UV induced senescence of skin fibroblasts may drive skin aging, which is the basis of uh, the, the rest of the story I'm going to tell you today. Uh, in this uh, play, we have also to consider the role of mitochondria. Mitochondria, known as, as the powerhouse of the cell, uh, are prominent sources of reactive oxygen species, which are thought to contribute to driving the aging process. And it is also known that mitochondrial dysfunction plays an important role in cellular senescence in various cell types. And this led us to the next question, is there a role for mitochondria in UV-induced senescence of human skin cells? Um, I show you uh, the results of an experiment where we treat uh, skin fibroblasts with mild UVB stress. In this experiment, we can recapitulate the process of photoaging, which takes more than 30 years in vivo in a two weeks experiment. And as expected, we find massive mitochondrial damage in uh, these uh, UV treated human skin cells, as you can see here by electron microscopy. We see mitochondrial blabbing, we see disruption of the crystal structure, crystal structure. 
Um, and this um, raised the next question. How is mitochondrial damage mitigated in these cells in order to survive? Because you will be unable to survive with damaged mitochondria. And um, it is known uh, that damaged mitochondria can be eliminated by the process of autophagy. This is an important quality control process uh, pioneered, among others, by Dr. Osumi who received the Nobel Prize 2016 for his discoveries. And this, in this process, here you see damaged mitochondria. They are um, included into autophagosomes, which later on uh, fuse with lysosomes, which then provide the enzymes to degrade the damaged mitochondria. And uh, this is used for recycling to generate new healthy mitochondria. So this is a nice concept, and we wanted to see whether we can observe mitochondrial autophagy, which is also called mitophagy in UV-treated human skin cells. And here I show you um, a picture where mitochondria are labeled in red and autophagosomes are labeled in green. And you see that there is uh, there are yellow spots, which means these are mitochondria which are inside uh, autophagosomes. I will now show you a small video where you see how a mitochondrion is excised from the mitochondrial network by an autophagosome and transported to the lysosomes in the periphery of the cell. So here you see the <clears throat> mitochondrial network in red. Here is the cell nucleus. Here are the autophagosomes. And if you look at this tiny spot, you see a red spot, which has a green um, membrane around. And this is a damaged mitochondrion, which is now um, being transported. From, it's, it's taken out from this mitochondrial network, and it's going to the cellular periphery to be um, uh, degraded by lysosomal enzymes. I run it once again. You see this from here to there. Uh, the, um, um, lysosome we don't see in this experiment, but the, uh, the case is pretty clear. So we also found that uh, damaged uh, mitochondria uh, must be removed for cell survival. And in this system, we found that inhibition of autophagy changes the cell fate from senescence to apoptotic cell death. So this uh, inspired us to think of autophagy inhibitors as new senolytics for human skin rejuvenation. And uh, to test this idea, uh, we are using uh, preclinical models, which I will introduce in the next slide. So um, these are organoid models for the skin, which are also called uh, skin equivalents. Uh, they are produced by combining fibroblasts in a collagen matrix with keratinocytes, which then differentiate at the so-called air-liquid interface to reproduce skin layers like uh, dermis, epidermis, and stratum corneum. And this is a, a useful model for many studies in the skin, and we applied it for skin aging. Um, a, char a characteristic uh, phenotype of aged skin is the thinning of the epidermis, um, which can be simulated in skin equivalents, as you see here, um, by using an increasing concentration of senescent cells in the skin equivalents from 0 to 100%. And if you look at the epidermis, you see this epidermal thinning. Um, and we found that you can have the very same effect when you um, directly irradiate uh, skin equivalent, existing skin equivalents with UVB. So this is shown here. So this is the unirradiated cell with the healthy and thick epidermis. And then with increasing UVB irradiation, you get this epidermal thinning. Um, in my final slide, I pre present you an experimental outline of how to test small molecules for their rejuvenation capacity in skin equivalents through the elimination of senescent cells. Um, and this is, um, we are, I'm, I'm um, 
leading a, um, a consortium where we want to do exactly this and we are in the middle of our uh, work and we will look forward to results to come very soon. Mm -hmm.